Lilia is an incredibly powerful legendary hero in Call of Dragons, and she's even one of the fastest commanders that you can expertise in the game if you do buy her from the VIP crates. So in this video, I want to review the very best talents, both for PvE, that's player versus environment, and player versus player, so that you can get serious value with this hero. Hello my friends and welcome back, I'm Chiskul Gaming, and Lilia is shockingly strong for being a VIP commander in Call of Dragons. In fact, in this video what I want to do is first review her skills to make sure we're aligned on how exactly she works and why she's so strong. From there we'll get into the very best talents, and lastly, how do you pair Lilia to get serious value? And I think this is going to actually be pretty straightforward, but you have several surprising options. So let's start by reviewing her kit. And the thing you need to know is that she does massive damage. I mean, she is an insane damage dealing hero. Her active skill when maxed will make it so that you do hero skill damage to the target and another nearby legion doing magic damage factor of 1,200 to each of them, with a 50% chance to also scorch them, dealing a damage over time, that's ma magic damage factor of 200, every second for five seconds. That's another 1,000 damage factor. So basically, she is going to do, on average, if you account for you know the fact that half the time you do the extra damage and half the time you won't, we're looking at an extra 500 damage factor there, so 1,700 combined damage factor per target, and there's two targets. And the other thing that's really crazy is that this area of effectability doesn't say that it's reducing the damage dealt by 15% for each additional target. For those of you familiar with Rise of Kingdoms and the mechanics that this game is based on, normally area of effect damage gets weaker based on hitting more targets it might work that way and they just aren't saying it but they aren't saying it and i haven't tested it yet but this could be really insane if the damage dealt doesn't decrease for each target hit and that's even more insane because if i jump all the way to the expertise skill it enhances the active skill to now hit three total targets instead of two so that's 1700 damage factor three targets for big group fights, I mean, Lilia seems absolutely top tier. The only thing that's a little disappointing is that the second skill is a peacekeeping skill. And just like in, you know, Rise of Kingdoms, we got Minamoto. He's a peacekeeper. He's actually good in open field in the endgame now as well in Rise of Kingdoms based off of the museum buffs. Lilia is kind of the same way. She's got this skill that only matters for PvE. That's player versus environment, which means if you are not going to expertise this hero, and you want to use her in the open field battling against other players, which you should, uh, then the thing you should do is expertise or, or really max the first skill. Then before you apply any other skill points to her, you should unlock all of her skills and then hope that they land when you put new skills in onto the third and the fourth skill, which are, by the way, are not PVE, peacekeeping skills. So the way that we describe this um, terminology on sort of where the skills go would be five, one, five, five. That's five points in the first skill, one point in the second skill, and ideally five points in the last two skills. Realistically, because your skills are deployed randomly when you do a skill upgrade, it's going to not be a five, one, five, five, probably. Um, in fact, when you buy the bundles um, at uh, you actually would get to 5255 five, five at best um, because the last bundle gives you the last three skills that you need. So from here, the third skill is really good, of course. 20% uh, magic attack bonus and 10% magic unit hit points. I mean, I said she's you know kind of a glass cannon here. Her only defensive capability is this 10% hit points because the fourth skill is doing synergy now with your active skill. And this is really interesting. When Lilia's Legion launches a normal attack, they have a 30% chance to scorch up to two surrounding enemy legions if your target legion is already scorched. Let me explain this. The active skill has this scorch effect. Remember that damage over time? 200 damage factor per second for five seconds. So when Lilia normal attacks, that's the attacks leading up to her active skill, when she normal attacks a legion, that has that damage over time effect applied, 
then there's a 30% chance that she'll apply that damage over time to two more nearby legions. Now, I don't know how this works if a nearby legion is already scorched, if it will extend the duration effectively, um, or I think it probably overwrites the existing scorched effect with the new five-second scorched effect. But putting this damage over time on nearby enemies is really powerful. And if we try to quantify this, remember, it's a thousand damage factor if you get it to land. So a thousand damage factor, that's 200 per second per you know second for five seconds, hitting two enemies, okay, we're looking at a 30% chance to put out another 2,000 damage factor, which is pretty good, okay? Um, and, it, and, and you have that percent chance every single turn you're hitting a scorched target. So if you hit that same scorched target for five seconds in a row with normal attacks, you have a chance to do a moderate to high amount of spreading of the sort of burning effect. And the way to sort of visualize this is you light one target on fire and then the fire spreads, which is Again, I think a really cool design mechanic. Now, one thing that this doesn't list and leaves me really wondering is if there's an internal cooldown for how often this can trigger. Sometimes in these games, there's an, a you know sort of internal cooldown limiting how frequently it could fire off, and it doesn't list one here, which leads me to believe that there isn't one, but there might be one. I don't know. Uh, that's the sort of thing where I'll have to do some testing or ask support to figure it out. And by the way, whenever I have a question about how some of these skills work, if you have the answer for sure, definitely let me know down below in the comments. So now that we've reviewed the skills on this hero, we understand, okay, she's doing big damage, hitting multiple targets with damage over time effects and lots of damage over time synergy, such that you really want to have as many targets hit as possible. What do we do with her talents? And she has the magic, peacekeeping, and skills talent trees. And I've got some recommendations for you for how you would put talents onto this commander. And one thing I want to mention up front is we're going to start with a PvP-based build. Um, but the thing is, Lily is so strong, I'm finding, in the early game, especially if you are, um, you know, going to buy all her chests and max her out at the start of the game, that I don't feel like I need extra peacekeeping punch. So I don't feel like I'm even missing out um, you know, battling my Darklings at the start of the game by virtue of not doing the Peacekeeping tree. I'm just going all in on my PvP-based tree. And because talent resets in this game are actually kind of expensive, you don't get them very easily, and you're probably just going to have to spend some gems, I feel like moving in on my PvP talent build from the start is a good plan. So that's what I'm doing. So in your Foundation Talents, here's what I'd recommend. Start with, of course, overall attack. You have to get it. But then I'm going for March Speed. If you want to battle other players, man, let me tell you, nothing sucks more than just getting run down by the enemy or not being able to chase them. March Speed is absolutely freaking crucial. Otherwise, you are extremely vulnerable. And in this game, sometimes you're going to have to take a hike. Nice to have the speed when you got to go long distances. From there, overall health. Um, I like this over... The gathering speed, of course, and the damage to Darklings, I don't think you need. Then you grab Mighty Power, your Foundation Talent. From here, I really like the Skills Tree, and I like the start of the Magic Tree. And the reason I like the Skills Tree is that I want to put as much Rage as possible onto this hero. Remember how her effects work. If she is doing active skills, she's hitting lots of enemies, and she's applying Scorched. And when they are Scorched she will then do even more damage. So I want to have the Scorched debuff as uh, just as much uptime as I possibly can get. So I want to get Rage Generation wherever I can get it. So let's look at that. In the skill tree, you have to start here, overall attack. From there, I chose to increase my hero skill damage. I mean, we just talked about how she's an insane hero skill damage. Hero, you got to go for that. Um, I don't care about, you know, taking less counterattack damage. I'm not trying to make her tanky. I don't care about increasing my hit points. I am not trying to make her tanky. She is a glass cannon. We're embracing it. We're moving all in. From here, I went for the extra rage generation because, again, the faster you fire off your skills because you generate rage, the more you'll apply scorched, the more you apply scorched, the more damage you deal. So launching a normal attack is a 10% chance to grant my legion 50 rage. Big win. Wouldn't leave home without it. We're skipping out on dealing more counterattack damage. Look, if you're swarming my Lilia, I'm dead. It's over. I lose. Um, And your Legion takes less normal attack damage. Same story. Like, look, 
Um, I, I, if you're if I got a bunch of people normal attacking me, I, I'm dead. So I just want to generate rage and move all in on my plan. And that's why I chose Spirit of Rage. Casting a rage skill grants 20 additional rage. I am all in on as much rage as possible. And remember that um, when you generate lots of rage, I've talked about this in my Rise of Kingdoms videos. Uh, and I, you know, for those of you new to my channel, I've covered this genre of game and the predecessor of this game for literally over four years. So if you're getting value from this video, just do me a huge favor and consider subscribing. I've got a not, just a lot of knowledge about this style of game. It doesn't mean every video I have has perfect information, but I do the very best I can. So consider throwing a like on the video to honor my commitment to you're getting the best knowledge possible and subscribing to the channel. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. So Spirit of Rage, really critical because the more rage you generate, the more valuable it is to generate even more rage. The faster your skill cycles get, just the better it is to go even faster. So that's why I took Spirit of Rage. From here, I'm going now into the magic tree because I want the rage gen through the roof and I want it as fast as possible. So then I went and I picked up magic hit points and then I went and I grabbed foresight. So when casting rage skills, you have a 25% uh, chance to grant yourself 100 total rage. Now, uh, the more rage I generate, the better it is, but I don't know if there is a rage cap in this game. I need to find out. In Rise of Kingdoms, the game this is based on, there is a limit of 220 rage per turn maximum that can be generated, which means you might overrage between Foresight and also Spirit of Rage and also High Spirits and also the base rage you generate from just doing normal attacks and counterattacks. I don't have the answer at this time, but until I get it, I'm still all in on the rage plan and just going to accept the fact that perhaps there's a cap and perhaps sometimes I overrage. It's all worth getting at this moment. From here, I move in on intimidation, dealing more hero skill damage. Uh, we're all in on that plan. Fire your skills faster, do more skill damage. Very straightforward. I am skipping all conquering, which again, I don't care about making myself more tanky. Um, increasing my attack. Attack is good. But with this hero, you only really care about the skill damage, okay? It, it's all about that. Attack will boost your normal attack damage and counterattack damage as well. But in this game, for this hero, all I want is skill damage. And because that's all I want, I move in on energy boost. An 8% chance to add an additional target to the rage skills that deal damage to multiple targets. So when you do area of effect damage um, with a hero, there's an 8% chance you'll hit another target. That's insane. That's exactly on plan for what I want to do with Lilia. Just hit as many targets as possible. I do really like this debuff, Magic Maelstrom. Um, it's very good. When your Legion consists entirely of magic units, which of course it will with Lilia, they gain defense mitigation before casting rage skills, mitigating 10% of the target's defense for five seconds. The thing that's keeping me from picking this skill, which normally will be a slam dunk, is that I don't think this is actually a debuff onto the enemy. It is a buff onto my own march. So a debuff onto an enemy will be really good because then everything hitting the target would get the benefit. But this says when your legion consists entirely of magic units, they gain defense mitigation. So your march gains defense mitigation before casting your skills and your march with Lilia will mitigate 10% of the target's defense. I would assume, by the way, that this works for all targets that you hit, not just the one target, because you know, your hero is gaining the mitigation effect. So I think your AOE would, you know, get the benefit of this for all the targets you hit. But this effect can only be triggered once every 30 seconds. So at the end of the day, I feel like these two effects are probably very similar in their overall effectiveness. I just prefer the craziness of hitting an extra target. If for some reason you thought you weren't going to be hitting lots of targets, I mean, that's really kind of why you're using Lilia is to hit lots of targets. But um, if you don't think it's going to be these massive group fights where you get value from hitting lots of things, I suppose Magic Maelstrom would be better. But I'm all in on the energy boost plan until I am presented a better rationale for going with Magic Maelstrom. But I think they both would be okay. Now, from here, I'm going to then go to the top of the skills tree. And I, w I just want to show you the magic tree really quickly to show you why I'm not going to do this. Uh, Iconoclasm makes it so that when your Legion is composed entirely of magic units, you deal more hero skill damage for, and it's only 2%, for 10 seconds every time you gain a buff effect. I don't think I'm gaining a lot of buff effects, so 
Um, I would have to take Magic Maelstrom if I wanted to start to gain some buff effects with her kit. I, I just don't think Iconoclasm's where it's at with her specifically. And then Elemental Boost, if your Legion consists entirely of magic units, they gain Vigor when casting Rage skills, increasing their hit points. Now, the thing I like about this is that I'm generating lots of Rage, which means I am going to get this to trigger very frequently, even though it's limited to once every 10 seconds. But I'm not trying to make her more, ta uh, more tanky. I want to make her do more damage. So let's see where I can get some more damage. It's over here. First thing we're picking up is Detached. Your Legion deals less normal attack damage, but increased hero skill damage. That's exactly on plan. Uh, she is doing so much skill damage that it doesn't matter that you're offsetting your sort of normal attack damage boost. You're, you're gaining so much skill damage, that's where it's at. That is absolutely a slam dunk pick here. Compared to um, when casting rage skills, you gain defense. I actually really like this because it has synergy with generating lots of rage. I think this is better than meets the eye, uh, but it's not good enough here. I don't need to make her more tanky at this time. I may feel differently later, but I don't, I don't think so now. And then Unquenchable Will, your Legion mitigates some of the enemy's hit points. Now, mitigating enemy hit points does actually seem really good. Uh, but because Lilia does so much skill damage, I'm pretty sure Detached would be the way to go. If we had a normal attack damage hero, then I would be more inclined to use Unquenchable Will. And there is a pairing where you could do like Lilia Hosk. I'll talk about that in a bit, where you would want to shift away from all of this heavy skill damage boosting because Hosk doesn't do any skill damage. But I think you want to pair her with someone that does skill damage. Now, from here, we're going for focus. When launching a normal attack, your Legion has a 10% chance to gain hero focus, increasing your hero skill crit rate for five seconds. I don't know exactly how this mechanic works, but increasing my skill damage in any way. Crit rate means I'm doing more damage on some of my hits, presumably. That's that's the plan I'm on. Hero skill damage through and through, 100%. I mean, I've already taken so many things that boost my hero skill damage. So if I'm going to do extra damage from a crit, that seems really good and, and like really good synergy. Also, your Legion deals more hero skill crit damage as the follow-up. Seems like just a great pick. So we go here, here, and here. Um, and if you're wondering, don't worry, at the end, I'll have a couple pictures flash on the screen of what the build is in its totality, okay? So you don't have to uh, worry about making notes on, on what the exact sequence is here. Um, so we're skipping out on some pretty moderate stuff. Um, increase healing received by your Legion and increases shields received. That's not on plan. So actually, fine to skip that. Taking less hero skill damage, I mean... I. I may feel sad that my Lilia is a glass cannon, but that's just what she does, and I'm embracing it. So I'm skipping egoism. Um, and also, we're skipping encouraging dance. Being hit with a normal attack has a chance to grant your Legion rage. You know, while I'm all in on the rage plan, my perspective on this one is that if I'm getting targeted, I'm probably going to get focused out and completely deleted anyways. And the more things hitting you, at least in Rise of Kingdoms, means you generate more rage anyways. So I don't think I need Encouraging Dance to give me more Rage. And I think it's unlikely that one thing will be hitting my Lilia. Probably many things will. So I don't think this is the plan for her. And then Steady Hands, when gaining a buff effect, um, your Legion has a 20% chance to gain Synergy. We're not gaining lots of buffed effects from uh, Lilia's kit, so I just don't think we need this. Which brings us to the final talent that we choose, which is Caged Animal. Every time your Legion casts a Rage skill, they deal more hero skill damage up to a maximum of 8%. So you gain half a percent every time you cast a rage skill. So presumably every skill cycle, what would happen is that Lilia would use her active skill. Then you get half a percent of hero skill damage boost. You have a second of downtime. Then your second hero, your deputy, casts their active skill. So then that would then on the fourth turn make it so now you have a total of 1% hero skill damage boost. So every skill cycle you gain 1% extra boost. That's not very much, but the reason I prefer it to this over here is that it's just not enough. Thirst for Blood, when casting a Rage skill, your Legion deals additional hero damage to the target Legion. Damage factor of 60. I mean, I'm pretty sure that if you do the math, that's like half a percent or less anyways of a skill damage boost. And the thing is that I don't think this works on every target you hit either. So Lilia AoE hits three targets, but I think you only get the 60 damage factor on the main target. 
So I just don't think Thirst for Blood is nearly there. I think Thirst for Blood is designed for epic heroes that don't have lots of skill damage. So in that instance, if that is true, then you take the Caged Animal, and that is not a great talent compared to, you know, what I think other trees can offer you, but it's the best that you've got, and I think in that regard, Caged Animal is a slam dunk. So I'm going to put up on the screen very briefly what the build is in its totality. Uh, hopefully you enjoy this particular build for PvP. I'm certainly looking forward to trying it. But from here, let's actually go and look at the PvE, that's player versus environment talent build, which you could do, although I personally won't. So if you're doing a PvE build, here's the route I would go. I'd start by doing the exact same initial talents, except you could go for the extra damage to Darklings and Dark Creatures, which I think would be super reasonable. Alternatively, you could go for some more hit points, but probably you want to go for this over here. I mean... 3% more damage. It's just really, really good. Um, then you're going to snap this off Mighty Power. Boom. And then we're going to go kind of up the middle here. You got to take the overall attack. Then I would take the extra damage to Darklings and Dark Creatures. It's just so good. Um, technically, you might want March Speed, but I'll talk more about that in a minute. Kind of depends on how fast your Lilia can keep up with your other marches. And uh, we're skipping out on defense. That's, that's not really why she's here. Somebody else should tank, not Lilia. And then we'll go over here and take more hero skill damage to Darklings and Dark Creatures. I mean, Lilia's all about hero skill damage, so we take that. We're skipping out on the chance to generate rage, although I think it is really good, and we'll come back for that later. And we're skipping out, by the way, on dealing more normal attack damage, because Lilia is a hero skill damage hero, not a normal attack damage hero. So from here, we'll go for Duet. Your Legion has a 10% chance to deal hero skill damage. When attacking Darklings and Dark Creatures, a damage factor of 400 can only trigger once every five seconds, but we'll take it. And we're skipping out on the ability to make her more tanky and get a shield. I'd rather deal the damage. Then we go up the middle again. We're increasing our attack, skipping out on the march speed, skipping out on the hit points. We're not trying to make her more tanky. We go up the top, or up the middle, I suppose, uh, again here. We take Faint. And I'm actually out of talent points to, to work with here, so I'll just describe it. Uh, but when your Legion attacks Darklings and Dark Creatures, you have a 10% chance to inflict slow and defense break. I love de uh, debuffs here. So it's less about the slow. I really don't care about that. and more about the debuff that I'm putting on the target so that all my marches hitting the same thing get the benefit of this. Seems really, really good. Then you're going to take Predestination. And the reason we're taking this, the reason we're even going into this tree at all is specifically to be able to get extra rewards when we battle Darklings. It's that simple. That's the reason you go in this tree, in part for the damage. I mean, the damage is good. You'll notice that, you know, pound for pound, the talent points are disproportionately good, but only good for Darklings, right? And this is a common mechanic for talent trees and, you know, this style of game is that when a tree is very focused in its, uh, you know, relevance, then it is just really good in that situation. So, you're getting, you know, you get 5% more uh, all, all damage over here when you are targeting Darklings and Dark Creatures, whereas for five talent points over here, you get 4% skill damage only. I mean, it it is way better to take these talents in the Peacekeeping Tree if you were struggling for some reason with your Darklings and Dark Creatures. And then from there, I still just want to go for more rewards. I'm going for War Trophy. I I'm just all in, okay? I'm all in on getting as many rewards as possible. And boom, I think that build is really, really good. Really, really good. Now, from here, though, you do have some options as to what you take next. And I would honestly stay in this tree. So if you're going to stay in this tree, I'm going to double back and get Fighting Spirit. The extra rage seems insanely good. Uh, you want to fire off her skills more frequently. Although, unlike the PvP build where the reason I want to do that is to use my area of effect damage to hit as many things as possible... I feel like against Darklings and Dark Creatures, you're less likely to be fighting many of them all at once. So that's why going for the rage-based skills are slightly less important. And, you know, the rage generation stuff is slightly less important for the PvE build, which is what we're doing here. And then you have a couple options here. Option number one is to say, man, my Lilia is not keeping up with my other marches. I just want some more march speed, which I think would be reasonable. And then also to take the extra damage up top here to Darklings and Dark Creatures. Another 5% seems really good. The alternative is that if you wanted to go for more Rage Speed, 
You could go over here, get some magic hit points, and then go over here, get foresight. And I think that would be a perfectly, a very perfectly reasonable alternative to some of these talent points that I've recommended. And at that point, you've deployed pretty much all your talent points and you're in a really great spot. So whether you use Lilia for PvE or PvP, and I'll have the PvE related build up on the screen, I think she is a commander that if you're going to spend in the game, pretty much everyone should be looking at. And just as a reminder, you obtain Lilia from VIP. You can max her at VIP level nine if you buy all the crates. The honor exclusive crate at VIP nine is not cheap. Um, if I scroll all the way back here, this is gonna run you a hundred bucks. This puts the final three skills onto the hero, assuming that you have maxed all the other bundles. So if you wanted a 5255, or at least to try to get that, you could save the 100 bucks, but I think the expertise is really good. That said, when you think about it, if you're using her for player versus environment, I mean, hitting an extra target's not gonna matter as much, but if you're expertising her, I mean, you're definitely using her for PvP, and even if you don't expertise her, you're almost certainly using her for PvP, and even if you just max the first skill by buying some of the lower tiers of the bundle, She's going to be a great hero to use, especially at the start of the game. Now, keep in mind, if you buy some of her at the start and don't put many skills into her at all, eventually she'll be outclassed because you're going to get more and more hero tokens just from going and getting your you know gold keys over time. So eventually that investment will be sort of outclassed, but the initial value of just, boom, I've got a commander that hits harder than anything else uh, in, in the arsenal is actually really strong. So now we can talk about the pairings, and I can't say for certain which ones are, you know, better than others, but I'll say there's just something really obvious here, which is that, yeah, you put the two legendary magic heroes together, and you're in a great spot, Velen and also Lilia. And, you know, if you're using Lilia as the primary, you're pushing damage. If you use Velen as the primary, you're going for the control or the PvP tree, which gives you really excellent effects against other players. So the Lilia as the primary is the damage route, whereas the control-based route is with Velen. Um, but both of them do area of effect damage, which is just wicked and has great synergy with the PvP build that I shared with you. Now from here, there are of course two epic choices that are extremely good. You could pair with Waldir, who's got the same talent trees, except he's also got PvP. So if you wanted to go with Waldir primary, you could open up some PvP talent as an alternative, and I think that's actually a very strong play. The other option would be to use Alwyn as the primary, and Alwyn has PvP and control, just like Velen. And let me tell you, I mean, these trees are really wicked. So if you wanted to go the Alwyn primary route for the additional sort of effects you can get from his talents, I think that would be a great choice, and I think that would be a great pairing. All of these heroes are using your magic units, and these I feel like are the very obvious and easy pairings. There are some other pairings that will work. One is Hosk. I don't love this pairing. Lilia, primary, Hosk, secondary is what I'm using to rally Darkling Forts at the moment. But the reason that Hosk works is that he doesn't actually care about what troop type you're bringing. So you can use him with magic units. Just remember, he doesn't do skill damage. So you would have to tweak the talent build on your Lilia to move away from all of the things that enhance your skill damage. Generating Rage is still fine because, you know, uh, using his active skill more frequently is still really good. But the things that specifically were affecting hero skill damage, I would completely remove from the build if you want to go Lilia, primary, Hosk, secondary. The other thing that I think would work, but I haven't actually verified, would be using Thea. I don't think they're particularly synergistic. Thea's going to run around giving you shields and make you more tanky. She really cares about having flying units which you could theoretically in the League of Order use Celestials with your Lilia. Uh, I don't think you would typically, but you could. Um, and that could be really, really strong with a Thea pairing. But I think all the mage primaries that I and secondaries I talked about earlier with uh, Velen and um, Waldir and also with Alwyn are just far more likely to be you know, the go-to choices there. You also could pair with Atheus. Same story as Thea, where like, hey, wait a minute. I mean, we're talking about magic skill damage dealt, okay? And generating rage seems good. Wait a minute. And, you know, getting some hit points and also you know, the increasing your healing if you're composed of flying units doesn't actually matter. 
Um, and then march speed and taking less damage is really good. So I don't think you even need to use the flying units, okay? Because if the Legion is composed of flying units, you receive more healing. Oh, okay, fine. We're not doing healing anyways, uh, except for this skill, which is 30% chance to grant healing, uh, you know, when attacked, 400 factor. But all that to say, there's actually a lot of heroes that I think work just fine with the Lilia pairing. As long as they do magic, um, so you, you got like a magic hero, you're in a good spot. I don't think I would try to pair Indus, but again, like as I look at her kit, I'm like, wait a minute, her attack range is very far. She inflicts harm on the target legion and nearby legion, so she's got a debuff. She does do a healing factor on friendly legions. So, you know, you wouldn't go with a skill damage build, um, but she increases your hit points, all right? When in battle, uh, she gains unyielding every eight seconds, reducing counterattack damage taken. I mean, she's tanky, right? So uh, there's just a lot of things you could do. But I, again, I think best pairings, we stick to those three mages, right? Ellen, uh, Waldir, and also Alwyn. In terms of what artifact you bring, at the early game, it's just going to depend on what you have access to. But, you know, I've got the Tier of Arben. That's the best legendary that I've got for magic units. I think that getting Le Legion defense on her is complimentary. Like, she's already got all this attack, so I'm making her a little more tanky, but not really on plan. In an ideal world, I would have attack. And, you know, there are several artifacts that can give you that at both the legendary and the epic tier. So if we make our way over to the tavern, just to talk about this very, very briefly, um, your best pairing, uh, or really best artifact, would be the Phoenix Eye. Just go all in on the attack plan, I think is huge. That is the route that I would go. From there, I suppose your other options, if you were looking at like what else would I recommend, you know, I, I don't think Staff of the Prophets where it's at, and this is a legendary. I'm, I'm gonna go down to the epics at this point, and I would say at this point, Magic Bomb is just really popular. Think of Magic Bomb as sort of weaker Phoenix Eye, okay? Phoenix Eye is the legendary strong version. Magic Bomb is the epic equivalent. That's probably the pick that I would make. For battling against other players in terms of this is the epic you go for. There are, of course, other cool effects like Freezing Ring, right? To give yourself a sort of ice block effect from World of Warcraft seems really cool. But, you know, the passive stats are going to matter. And that's why I'm recommending entirely artifacts that are going to give you a magic based attack or Legion attack. That's where it's at. In fact, while we're here, why don't I just rip open these artifact keys that I have? I save them for moments like this. So heck yeah, we rip open 10 of these and let's see what we get. Spirit Bangle. So nothing I would put on my Lilia, GG. We rip open another 10. Okay, legendary, let's go. Ooh, uh, Breath of the Forest, actually a bit of a GG. Um, this is a garrison related item. Garrison Army attack and Legion defense. Not one of my top choices for artifacts, but I mean, a, a cool pickup at the start of the game, I suppose. Homecoming Blossom, uh, not something I'm looking to use on my Lilia. Uh, I mean, it's kind of cool. Uh, after a short charge up, teleports your Legion back to your city. All right. All right. I mean, hey, I got a Legendary, and I'm not complaining. And if you enjoyed this video, do me a huge favor. Throw a like on here. Consider subscribing to the channel so you can get more hero guides just like this one. And if you're looking for more beginning player guidance, for example, how is it that Chiskel Gaming has so much experience on his heroes at the start of the season? Oh. Immortal Treasure. GG, I'm going to have to buy that. Um, how does Chiskul have so much experience on his heroes at the start of the season? Video for that will be in the end screen. This is like, I don't know, we're three and a half days into the game, and I have a lot of levels on a lot of heroes. I'll explain the secret trick that gets you all that experience. And if you're looking for some common tips and tricks, that'll be in the end screen as well. Check out those videos.